This is a this is an erudite question, rattling off mission names and yeah. things. And Carolyn Porco, who she mentioned, is a, a colleague of mine, a scientist, a planetary scientist, mm -hmm. who doesn't work on the nearby planets, doesn't work on Mercury or Mars. Mars has been in all the news yeah. these past months. Uh, she works on Saturn, which happens to be my favorite planet. It's also her favorite planet. Why is I, it your favorite planet? It's so obvious. What do I even have to say? I mean, come I think, on now. I think if you're going to pick a favorite planet, <laughs> all the other planets are clearly jealous. Uh, it is so the best planet out the there. The rings? Because the rings! Oh, don't even! The it's rings. the rings! Is it because that's where in the new Star Trek they hid to... Uh, Behind the rings, that yeah. was so... <laughs> That's pretty realistic. I forgot about that. Yep. Yeah, we hid behind the rings. By the way, these rings are basically, you know, they're like, they're very thin. It, you know, any radio signal would just pass through it. Uh, presumably, these spaceships in the future mm -hmm. have other ways of seeing other than visible light. So, I, just to be hide behind Saturn's ring, I can't, yeah. can't go there. But the concern is that we. And I thought Star Trek was realistic. <laughs> okay. The, the concern. The concern is that we are, we are focusing too much, perhaps. Mm -hmm. NASA is focusing too much on nearby planets when there's all the glory of the outer solar system waiting for us to tap. Yeah. And while she didn't say it, she well, she did say that also we have no manned mission scheduled over the next 10, 15 years. Yeah. So is NASA being short-sighted? Um, the answer is NASA is being underfunded. Yeah, yeah. NASA isn't short-sighted. They would love to do all this stuff. Right. That's all they do. Exactly. And as I said with a previous uh, question... The balance of whether you study something on the inner solar system versus the outer solar system is not always what is most interesting, is what is most doable. And what is most doable in people's lifetimes. It, it, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> partially. Possibly. Possibly. So, you know, you just get a fatter engine to, make, yeah. to, to get it out there. So my point is, uh, it's a complex matrix, decision matrix, that mm -hmm. planetary scientists use. And, but apart from that, NASA is simply underfunded to not only do all the science we wanted to do, not only do all the 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 the, the crewed missions on a time scale that yeah. would keep us pumped, yeah. but also NASA has been charged with be monitoring Earth and doing other sort of what people might consider practical things like monitoring weather and climate change and all the rest of this and the environment. And so if you want NASA to do all of the above, yeah. then fund it at the level of all of the above. What, uh, is there something that you think that would be a simple thing that people could do to try to get NASA more funding or no? Yeah, vote out of office the people who don't fund NASA. <laughs> it's that simple. This is a democracy. Let's make it work for us. But I wrote a whole book on it. I mean, essentially, it's, it's called Space Chronicles, right. Facing the Ultimate Frontier. And in there, I, I just talk about ways to to rethink the role of NASA in space exploration mm -hmm. as a driver of all that we care about in a modern society. Our economy, our wealth, our mm -hmm. dreams, our visions, uh, you know, everything that drove us, that got us out of the 60s and still enabled us to hope yeah. and to dream about a future that we might make for ourselves. Mm. We have just 10 seconds left. We have, you got oh, more questions 10 seconds for me. Left.